Welcome back to Philologic. Today we're going to be talking about one of the simplest ways to test arguments for validity, known as counterexamples. There are two questions that I want to answer for you today. The first is, what is a counterexample? And the second, how do we construct counterexamples? Let's start with the first question, what is a counterexample? I promise I'll try to improve my handwriting over time. As just mentioned, a counterexample is a way of testing an argument's validity. This, of course, is just a partial definition. Let's try to get something that's a little more fleshed out. Sometimes, whether an argument is valid is immediately obvious. For instance, consider this never-before-seen argument. All dogs are mammals, all mammals are animals, so all dogs are animals. You might also have an argument that says something like, all bananas are fruits, all fruits are food, so all cats are lions. It's immediately obvious that the argument on the left is valid and the argument on the right is invalid. After all, the reasoning in the argument on the left is transparently truth-preserving. Whereas the argument on the right, well, its premises aren't even relevant to its conclusion. Bananas, fruit, and food don't really have anything to do with cats and lions. The validity of arguments such as these is really obvious, and we don't really need to take any further steps to test these arguments. Of course, sometimes it's not so obvious whether an argument is valid. For instance, consider this slightly convoluted argument. All fatalists are determinists, some determinists are consequentialists, so some fatalists are consequentialists. Whether an argument such as this one is valid is a little unclear. This isn't to say that you might not have an intuition as to whether it's valid or invalid, but just that it's not as easy to tell. Also, not everyone knows what these terms mean, which means that the content might be unfamiliar. It's arguments such as these that give us a need to have some method of testing for validity, other than just our intuitions. So then, how do we check for validity? Well, as you might remember from my previous video, whether an argument is valid depends on whether it has a truth-preserving form. If the argument has a form that preserves truth, then we say that the argument is valid. If, however, the argument has a form that does not preserve truth, then the argument is invalid. Now here's the important part. When an argument's form is valid, we can replace its content with anything we want, and it'll be completely impossible to make the premises true and the conclusion false. The second that we make the premises of a valid form true, the conclusion will come out true every single time. And we can replace A, B, and C with anything we want. The same cannot be said about invalid arguments. If an argument is invalid, then it is possible to change its content so as to make the premises true and the conclusion false. It's this key difference between valid and invalid arguments that counterexamples allow us to exploit. So now we can return to our original question, what is a counterexample? A counterexample is an argument with the same form as the argument being evaluated that has true premises and a false conclusion. This underlined part here being the pivotal part. That's our definition of a counterexample. If it's not totally clear right now, don't worry about it. Once we're finished with question two, you'll be a pro at this. So question two, how do we construct counterexamples? In order to work our way through this question, let's consider the intimidating argument from earlier. All fatalists are determinists, some determinists are consequentialists, so some fatalists are consequentialists. Our first step in constructing a counterexample for this argument is to strip it of its content. We'll replace its content with letters. Notice the letter choice. I didn't just stick to A, B, and C. Instead, I decided to choose letters that fit with the previous content of the argument, just to make my life easier when referencing the argument. I highly recommend doing this when you're constructing your own counterexamples. Of course, keep in mind that the letters themselves don't actually mean anything. They're just empty placeholders. Now we're going to replace F, D, and C with new content that'll make these premises true and this conclusion false. One last piece of advice before we begin, you always want to start off by making the conclusion false. It'll just make your life much easier. So let's go ahead and replace this content. I went ahead and used bananas for the letter F, and I used apples for the letter C. That makes the conclusion, so some bananas are apples. This is clearly false, and so we've succeeded in making the conclusion false.
So now we need to replace the content of the premises with something that will make them both true. Right now what we've got is that all bananas are something, and that some something are apples. Well, here's an idea. Let's make D fruits. That makes our first premise say, all bananas are fruits, which is true. And it makes our second premise say, some fruits are apples, which is also true. And so we've done it. We've managed to create a counterexample for our original argument. The fact that we managed to grab the exact same form, but make its premises true and its conclusion false, proves that the argument is invalid. All we're doing when constructing a counterexample is just showing, in an obvious manner, that the form we're dealing with is invalid. Notice, valid arguments do not have counterexamples. Given that all counterexamples must have true premises and a false conclusion, it'll never be possible to construct one for a valid argument. That being said, I welcome you to try. You'll never succeed, but it can make very good practice. Let's go ahead and try one more. Here's one that I made up just now, completely unscripted, of course. Some software developers are not people who endorse pirating. All people who endorse pirating are immoral people. So, some software developers are not immoral people. Given that we normally believe this conclusion to be true, it might be tempting to think that this is a valid argument. But let's go ahead and construct a counterexample to see if that's true. Let's underline all of the content just to make it easier on the eyes. And now let's go ahead and write the form of the argument. Let's see what we've got. Some s are not p, all p are i, so some s are not i. This is much easier on the eyes than this mess that we've got going on up here. And now we're going to go ahead and try to fill in new content to make the premises true and the conclusion false, starting, of course, with the conclusion. And we're going to go ahead and stick to filling in food as the content because I find it easy to think about and I like food. So let's go ahead and try to make some s are not i false. I've got just the thing. We're going to go ahead and make s vegetables and i food. And so our conclusion reads, so some vegetables are not food. This is certainly false, although I'm sure there are some nine-year-olds out there who would disagree with me. And now let's go ahead and try to make our premises true. So let's see, we've got some vegetables are not p, so why don't we go ahead and make p carrots. And now we've got some vegetables are not carrots, and this is true. Plenty of vegetables are not carrots. And finally, our second premise becomes all carrots are food, which is clearly also true. And so our counterexample reads, some vegetables are not carrots, all carrots are food, so some vegetables are not food. This is clearly an invalid argument. And so we've proven that the argument that we're evaluating is invalid. That pretty much wraps up how to construct counterexamples. Let's recap. Our first question was, what is a counterexample? And we answered that a counterexample is an argument with the same form as the argument being evaluated that has true premises and a false conclusion. Our second question was, how do we construct a counterexample? The answer here was that first, we write down the form of the argument being evaluated, and then second, we fill in the content so as to make the premises true and the conclusion false. If we succeed in doing this, we can safely say that the argument is invalid. And now for some final thoughts that I think are just as important as everything else that I've expressed in this video. The first is, when making a counterexample, stick to simple, objectively true or false statements. The idea is to make a simple argument that can show that the argument being evaluated is invalid. If you make your counterexample equally convoluted, then that kind of defeats the purpose. Second, and I think this is really important, Counterexamples can only prove that an argument is invalid. This is to say that counterexamples can't prove that arguments are valid. Now you might be asking, but what if you've tried to construct a counterexample for an argument and you just can't get it to work? Wouldn't that show that the argument is valid? And unfortunately the answer is no. The fact of the matter is, we may be busting our heads up against a wall trying to think of a counterexample, and it might just be the case that it's a failure of our imagination, and not that the argument is valid. Having a tough time building a counterexample might suggest that the argument is valid, but the point is that it doesn't prove it. For that, we would need some more sophisticated methods of testing validity. We'll be looking at some of those in other videos that I plan on uploading in the future. The last thing that I want to say is, I want to remind you that you're watching a video.
which can make it look like it's really easy to construct counterexamples. The fact is, sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's difficult. I'm running off of a script that I wrote earlier, which can make it look like I'm coming up with these things right off the top of my head, but that's just not true. So if I made it look easy, and you're struggling, don't feel bad. Sometimes it's just hard to come up with counterexamples. And sometimes it takes more than one try to get it right. And as always, thanks for tuning in.